Happy Justice, uh, introducing this poet, famous poet named Jamal May. Who's ever heard of him? Newer poet we're focusing on. I wanted to change it up. He doesn't always do spoken word poems. Uh, he's from Detour Detroit. He likes to folk. Yeah, question. No, no. He's no. Not, that's a good question, though. But Jamal May, oh, I know Jamal. Trust me, I know. But he's not him. He writes about climate justice, climate change, global warming. He likes to look at the atmosphere and really analyze himself and the atmosphere and how it's affecting him, right? And then our theme, again, is climate justice. Um, and we're going to look at Water Devil, OK? All, everything's in your, in your work packet here as well, OK? Um, our skill, metaphor versus extended metaphor, right? Who could tell me what a metaphor is as a literary technique? What can you tell me, OK? Y'all, I'm going to give you that some time. You already know? OK, first I'm going to go with them first. Kalodi? Um, a metaphor is when you use, you compare something without using like or as. Stop, you agree? Okay, okay. No, so, not. so when you use. Oh, I like this debate. Without. Without using like or as. It's not a debate, he's so, wrong. So what, <laughs> what about like or as then? What is that? Well, it's a That's a simile. So she was right. Um, so we're gonna use that, but we're also gonna do an extended metaphor. So on your papers here, go ahead and look at your papers here. Uh, there's part of it we can fill in. So in this part, it says metaphor, right? A literary technique that compares two unlike images without using like or as to emphasize a point, right? And my example, can you read that for me really quick? Uh, Terrell, my example, metaphor example. A little louder, please. Books are folded up forest where I lose myself on the path less taken, and sometimes the forest can lead to new places, new thoughts unearthed. You might find a line or two in the dirt, so it's worth the time to walk to open up the spine and get lost. So if we go backwards, the metaphor itself, my first metaphor is books are folded up forest, right? I'm comparing two things. What are the two things I'm comparing? Yeah. A book in a forest. Book in a forest, right? Two unlike things, right? But when I extend it, like when Terrell read that poem, it goes on and on comparing each line about books and forest. The two unlike things, but I keep going through the poem. And that makes the poem stand out even further, right? It gives creative imagery for the actual reader to help them understand what I'm trying to say, mm. right? So that's an extended metaphor. Any questions about what an extended metaphor means? Mm. Snap if you think this is, like, uh, this is a review for you now. Or is this stuff if it's new to you? So this is new, okay. So we're gonna practice, this is tough stuff, okay? Go ahead and turn the page for the next part. We're gonna jump right into the poem. It's always best to actually jump in. As she's reading, <coughs> I want you to underline words that resonate with you first, and then the second round we'll look at literary techniques, go. Spout of a leaf. Listen out for the screams of your relentless audience, the applause of a waterfall in the distance, a hurricane looting a Miami shopping mall. How careful are you with the rain crating curve of your back? Near your forest, all are ready to swim and happy to drown in me. Mm. This lake of fire that most the edges. Mm. From my mouth, they come up to peel the flames and drink their slick throats into mm. most silent of ashes. Mm. Okay, very short poem. <laughs> Take about 10 more seconds to annotate that, what resonated with you and we'll do a second read for literary techniques, okay? Give yourself eight more seconds. I already see Allison already got some words. Slick throats in the distance of ashes. All are ready to swim. Okay. Awesome, so now the second read I want to go over now, I'm gonna have one more person read, but the other person, the other people will annotate literary devices. So can you just tell me, just popcorn, like what are some literary devices we learned about? I already know juxtaposition is one of them, right? What's another one? Simile. Simile, I'm gonna write a couple down, yeah. okay? Um, Zindo. Personification. Can you tell us a little more about that? Personification is when you give a non-living thing human qualities. Yep. Um, put the next person, let's do two more. Oh, uh, onomatopoeia. Oh, uh, <laughs> you gave me the hardest one to spell. You guys are gonna help me out. Oh my God. On, O-N-A-M-O-N-P-I-A. 
Onamanakia. I think that's Onamanakia. right. <laughs> you put a T. Oh, <laughs> oh, um, I'm still an English teacher. I can spell it right. Is that a T in it? Yes, yeah, onomatopoeia. Oh, I know. Ah. You gave me the hardest one. Oh, my Lord. Okay, that is definitely one. Can you give an example? Oh, no. <laughs> give an example. It's like repeating something. Ooh, that's, 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 that's something repetition. else. No. That's repetition. Oh, what is onomatopoeia? When you give, I think, sound to <laughs> something else, like crash oh, or boom. boom. Yes, Bada exactly. Bro. Bada Bada boom. Really? Really? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. One more, one more, one more. And we'll move on. Yeah. Imagery. Imagery. Can you tell me more about imagery? It's like if you take your words and you try to make it to an image, like, Basically, the, if I yeah. describe a tree, I'm gonna be like this tall, vibrant tree with the green colors yeah. and brown and birds. And you're using colors. You're yeah. using uh, I'm descriptive to, language. Like, make you see it as I'm describing exactly. it. Exactly. So, one more read before we go into your question, and then we'll look at literary devices. Okay. So one more read. Um, okay. Can, Glody, can you read? The next round, and then everyone else were underlining some literary devices that stuck out right away. Okay, that way we can further understand the poem. I'm not Go. reading it, Kara. Okay, that's fine. Spot of a leaf, listen out for screams of the relentless audience, the appalls of waterfall in the distance, a hurricane looting a Miami shopping mall. How careful you are with the rain cradling curve of your back. Near your, near your forest, all are ready to swim and happy to drown. In me, this lake of fire, the, that most, the edges. You got it. From my mouth, they come to peel the flames and drink their steak throws into the small side net rider. Perfect. So now I have a question for you, okay? As you were underlining some literary devices, what stuck out? What, what one literary device stuck out to you most? And we're gonna swing it back into extended metaphor. Yeah, Kelly. Slick throws. So what is that? What is that? Out of all the literary devices we've kind of laid out right now, what like, I thought imagery, because like slick, like I thought like, I f it felt like a devilish thing, like slick, like you're slick to steal something. Exactly. Or, yeah. You can see that imagery. You can see that description, right? Let's do a couple more. Um, go ahead. Pick the next one. Um, Allison. Say it one more time. Peel of the flames. What, what is that? Personification. Personification. Why is that uh, personification? Because you can't peel flames. Like, mm. you can't peel flames. Is it personification? Is it? What is it? Juan. Uh, I think it might be imagery or. Yeah, I imagery. think it falls, it falls in between. It can get confusing, right? Yes, you can technically, like, they're giving a human trait to peel something, so that's cor te te technically correct, but it's more on the imagery aspect of it, okay? Um, and last, man. Um, it says here, a hurricane looting a Miami shopping mall. I think that's personification. Okay, yes, why? Because, like, in general, a hurricane can't do things a human can, and only a human can loot a exactly. shopping mall. Exactly, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, now, back to extended metaphor and metaphor. What are the two images that are being compared? This should be, I feel like after reading this, shouldn't be too hard, but I'm gonna give you some time. What are the two images? Remember, remember when I did my poem, Books and Forest? Those are the two images that Kelly pointed out. What are the two images that are being compared here? Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait for a couple more, just for everyone to, what do you think are being compared? And this is, if, if you're wrong, you're fine. We'll try, we'll try our best. Um, Okay, Nalija? Violence and water. That's Why do you say that? I'm saying violence and water, because it says, happy to drown in me this lake of fire. Um, drowning is not very um, positive, and lake of fire doesn't, I wrote the Red Sea next to it. Mm. I don't know, I just, that's what I kind of thought, like fire, every, I don't know. Yeah, you're making connections from like, even from the Bible, like the Red Sea, right? Uh, what else, anyone have some, it's, there's not just one right answer, that's the beauty of poetry, yeah. I was gonna agree, cause it's like, they have like, like you see the applause of a waterfall.